This question comes from Alan, who asks, if every human somehow simply disappeared from the face of the earth, how long would it be before the last artificial light source would go out? We'll start with the obvious, most lights wouldn't last long, because the major power grids would go down relatively quickly. Without people, there would be less demand for power, but our fridges, air conditioners, and lava lamps would still be running. Fossil fuel plants, which supply the vast majority of the world's electricity, require a steady supply of fuel, and their supply chains do involve people doing things. As coal and oil plants started shutting down in the first few hours, other power sources would get hit with the extra load. This kind of situation is difficult to handle even with human guidance, and the result would be a rapid series of cascading failures, leading to a blackout of all the major power grids. Nuclear reactors, of course, don't require a steady supply of fuel, one reactor operator I talked to said that if their core settled into low power mode, it could continue running almost indefinitely, a cube of uranium contains about 6 million times as much stored energy as a similar-sized cube of coal. Unfortunately, although there's enough fuel, most nuclear reactors wouldn't keep running for long. As soon as something went wrong, the core would go into automatic shutdown. Every part of a reactor control system is designed so that a failure causes it to rapidly shut down. This would happen quickly, many things can trigger shutdown, but the most likely culprit would be the failure of the power grid. However, plenty of light comes from sources not tied to the major power grids. Let's take a look at a few of those, and when each one might turn off. Many remote communities, like those on far-flung islands, get their power from diesel generators. These can run until their tanks run out of fuel, which in most cases could be anywhere from days to months. Off-grid generating stations that don't need a human-provided fuel supply would be in better shape. Geothermal plants can run for a fair bit of time without human intervention. According to the maintenance schedule for the Svartsengi Island geothermal plant in Iceland, every six months the operators must change the gearbox oil and regrease all electric motors and couplings. Without humans to perform these sorts of maintenance procedures, some plants might run for a few years, but they'd all succumb to corrosion eventually. Lights relying on wind power would last a bit longer. Wind turbines are designed so that they don't need constant maintenance, for the simple reason that there are a lot of them and they're a pain to climb. The Getzer wind turbine in Denmark was installed in the late 1950s and it generated power for 11 years without maintenance. Modern turbines are typically rated to run for three years without servicing, and there are no doubt some which would run for decades, and one of them would probably have at least a status LED in it somewhere. Eventually, most of the wind turbines would be stopped by the same thing that would destroy the geothermal plants, their gearboxes would seize up. Generators that convert falling water into electricity will also keep working. An operator at the Hoover Dam once said that if everyone walked out, the facility would continue to run on autopilot for several years. Though if the power grid is down, all that electricity would have nowhere to go. In the end, the dam would probably succumb to clogged intakes or the same kind of mechanical failure that hit the wind turbines and geothermal plants. Battery-powered lights wouldn't fare much better, and will all be off in a few dozen years. Even without anything using their power, batteries eventually self-discharge. Some types last longer than others, but even batteries advertised as having long shelf lives typically only hold their charge for a decade or two. Solar power is probably the most promising candidate. There are many off-grid solar-powered buildings, weather stations, and other remote infrastructure around the world. Emergency call boxes, often found along the side of the road in remote locations, are frequently solar-powered. They usually have lights on them, which provide illumination every night. Like wind turbines, they're hard to service, and they last for a long time. Solar panels will generally last as long as the electronics connected to them, and as long as the panels are kept free of dust and debris. The wires and circuits will eventually succumb to corrosion, but solar panels in a dry place, with well-built electronics, could easily continue providing power for a century if they're kept free of dust by occasional breezes or rain on the exposed panels. If we follow a strict definition of lighting, solar-powered lights in remote locations could conceivably be the last surviving human light source. But there's another contender, and it's a weird one, spent nuclear fuel. Contrary to popular portrayals, radioactivity isn't usually visible, which is part of why we need warning signs around areas with radioactive materials or waste. Sure, watch dials used to be coated in small amounts of radium to help them glow in the dark, but the glow didn't come from the radioactivity itself. It came from the phosphorescent paint on top of the radium, which glows when it's irradiated. Once the phosphorescent paint breaks down, the watch dials are still radioactive, but no longer glow. Watch dials, however, are not our only radioactive light source. When radioactive particles travel through materials like water or glass, 
they can emit light through a sort of optical sonic boom. This light is called Cherenkov radiation, and it's seen in the distinctive blue glow of nuclear reactor cores. Some of our radioactive waste products, such as cesium-137, are melted and mixed with glass, which cools into a solid block before being wrapped in more shielding for transport and storage. And in the dark, these glass blocks glow blue. Cesium-137 has a half-life of 30 years, which means that two centuries later, the blocks will still be glowing with 1% of their original radioactivity.